In Roman cities, public toilets were a convivial space where the users took advantage of the moment for a chat. This innovation ended there. In the Middle Ages, there was a complete break from this Roman influence. In Europe, up until the end of the 19th century, it wasn't uncommon for people to relieve themselves in public. In private, the bourgeoisie and nobles used chamber pots, either directly or through chairs with holes. The contents of the pots ended up in the street outside, sometimes along with a warning cry. Mrs. Angela Lee looks after the Gladstone Pottery Museum in England. In this ancient ceramic factory were made a good number of the chamber pots of Great Britain. In the 19th century, public defecation was a lot more tolerated in some ways because it had to be. Cummings is the first person to have patented a toilet, but he wasn't really the inventor of the toilet because his design wasn't very successful. These first water closets, patented in 1770, were a sketch version of the modern toilet. The man who successfully invented a toilet, more like we know today, is Brahma. This is a Brahma closet, and it flushes by lifting a handle which opens and closes a flap to get rid of your waste, and that would stop the smells. Dirty water was poured into a river. In London, it ended up in the Thames. The Houses of Parliament are right by the Thames, so they were the people who were getting some of the worst stink smell so bad they were going to leave. But they could do something about it, and what they decided to do was get the engineer Joseph Bajoujet to build huge sewers alongside the Thames to take the waste further away. Before there were sewers, city dwellers drank the river water which ran through the cities. They died in masses from cholera, typhoid and hepatitis. People have always needed toilets, so yes, disease was a call to action, but really it was more about keeping us away from smells and thinking about it. It's quite unthinkable to leave an unpleasant odour in the loo. Imagine the shame. In the 20th century, sewer systems became widespread and hid excrement from sight. Thinking things had been dealt with, the old continent and the Americas stopped innovating. Unlike in Japan, where users have high-tech, comfortable seats suitable for reading and meditation. The Japanese and South Koreans have a real culture of cleanliness, a true passion for toilets. This cultural relationship changes their attitude. The sophistication and innovation of their toilets is always getting more and more advanced. The Japanese are modest, especially the women. They don't want the noise to be heard when they pee or anything else, so Otohime toilets were invented which mask the sound of peeing. Thanks to this system, no noise can be heard and water is economized. So we developed Otohime, a device which generates the sound of a toilet flushing for 25 seconds, and that works. This is no joke. Toto, the maker, is listed in the Guinness Book of Records for the number of its patents. Its star product is the Washlet, developed in 1980. Adapted to different practices around the world, the seat has a jet of water for cleaning. I think the Toto Washlet could do well in Europe. It's very agreeable to have this little fountain playing on your bottom. Almost unknown to Westerners, the Washlets, or toilets with a cleaning jet, are a real technological advance which increases hygiene. The Research and Development Department at TOTO imagines and tests new solutions ceaselessly. An anti-adhesive coating, always clean, powerful and efficient evacuation, remote control piloting, numerous options are available. Heated seats, deodorizing, secure automatic closing. 
Although water in Japan is nowadays abundant, it is already lacking in temperate countries where Toto sells its toilets. In any case, water treatment constantly increases in price. We have to economize. Before 1960, our toilets consumed 20 liters of water. Since then, technology has improved, and nowadays they use just 3.8 liters. In the West, our toilets use on average 9 liters of water. Only the most recent are equipped with a double button flush control of 3 or 6 liters. On the other hand, the smaller flush is often insufficient, even for a little paper. Our latest toilets succeed in saving water thanks to a tornado flush, which cleans everywhere. Contrary to what people think, it's not the amount of water used which is essential, but the way in which it is used. Thanks to this system, we can evacuate all kinds of materials with very little water. We've also invented a new kind of toilet lid that stops urine from coming out when a man urinates sitting down. In the land of the rising sun, a lot of men make an effort to urinate sitting down so as not to spray the lid and around it. Urine and excrement contain precious information about our state of health. Renaissance doctors knew this very well, and the examination of stool and urine was their main means of diagnosis. Ten years ago, Toto directed its research towards medical assistance. Some models analyze urine and aim at assisting senior citizens preoccupied by their state of health. Others are capable of detecting pregnancy and to give information on the female menstrual cycle. These intelligent toilets are mainly installed in clinics. This toilet can measure your weight, evaluate arterial pressure and the glucose levels in urine. Then show all this on a computer. I'll give you a demonstration with test urine. The glucose level in the urine is a little high. This level is measured by a retractable bio captor installed in the upper part of the seat. This captor was developed by Professor Karube. This bio captor, which we've installed in the toilets, is a system which detects the glucose level in urine. From this level, we calculate the blood sugar level. Will the use of this type of equipment become widespread? For the moment, intelligent toilets haven't had the success that was hoped for. The first limit of the biocaptors is their lifespan. Usually, the chip has to be changed after 150 to 200 uses. That's the problem. The second limit is due to the current health system. If doctors had accepted the glucose level in urine as a reference, everyone would have bought this system. But at present, doctors still require the glucose level in blood and not in urine. At 6,000 euros each, intelligent toilets for urine were too expensive and clashed with the lobby of doctors. Japanese scientists are now turning their research towards the large intestine. I want to develop the toilet to see what kind of bacteria is living inside your body as quickly, simply, and in as cheap a way as possible. So, to extract information for bacteria living there, we need poo because poo is better than pee. Fecal matter, in fact, contains a lot of bacteria from our intestines while urine is sterile. These bacteria inform us about our microbiota and, as a consequence, about our state of health. Professor Yamada's project is to design an intelligent seat adaptable to any toilet. 
The washlet, that is, you know, you can... The washlet is, you know, you can attach the washlet onto your toilet. That is, I think, the best. If you can attach equipment to extract the fecal information from your toilet, and then you can send the information to the cloud, you can analyze the data, and then you can see your information on a smartphone. The close links between microbiota and health are starting to be established. Colorectal cancer, diabetes, obesity, and also Alzheimer's cause anomalies which are found in stool. Nowadays, some can be detected, and research is being actively pursued to detect other organic changes at an early stage, which would increase the chances of cure markedly. If you can do this in a toilet, if you, can do this in a toilet you don't have to go to the hospital, and you don't have to send your poo to the company. Because they can... Because they can recognize your profile from your toilet. Then they say... Yeah, you then they say, yes, you should take this drug, or the supermarket says, yes, you should eat this food because of your profile saying you should eat this. That kind of feature will come, I'm sure. For toilets to become health equipment, populations have to accept this, which means that a profound change in mentalities would have to happen in many countries. In Japan, where toilets are the object of a cult, this has been happening for a long time. This is Ususama Mayu, the god of toilets. He is there to protect our bowels from illness. This is an ancient Japanese toilet, and people make a wish by putting a coin here. They wish to be in good health at the toilet. It is because the god of toilets is always at our side that the Japanese have developed high-tech toilets. Undergarments are marked to prove they are under the protection of the god Mayu. This god of toilets has the power to transform that which is dirty to clean and is placed today as a protection in the toilet. Some families, when inaugurating a new toilet, place the god Mayu on a cushion, sat on the bowl, and they drink green tea and eat rice cakes. The god of toilets doesn't really exist, but we take care of the cleanliness of our toilets as if there was in fact a god. That's the ethos. Japan thinks, rightly, that toilet culture contributes to the image of their country as being at the forefront of the health and hygiene sector. Japanese products, in which are expressed the technological advances made in other domains, are an economic advantage. <laughs> 